The morning rises over Nagaland, one of the smallest and least developed states of the so-called Seven Sisters, the relatively unexplored and isolated territories that comprise this northeastern corner of India. Stretching from Tibet in the north to Myanmar in the south, the region is characterized by fertile plains, Himalayan foothills and deep gorges. Nagaland is a pearl amongst the sister states, often called the Switzerland of the East. For the Naga, it is not statehood, but ethnic tribe that defines identity. Each tribe has its own custom, language and oral traditions, handed down from generation to generation. Nagas are happy people. They are contented in life. They are happy with what they have. Even, they, even if they have just two pairs of clothes, they are happy, they are able to smile. They are very re receptive and they are very affectionate and they are very warm people. Nagas of Indo-Mongoloid stock are known for their courage, warrior skills and headhunting traditions. Tribes believe that the soul of a man rests in the nape of his neck. Only through decapitation can the soul be freed. The heroism of a warrior was measured through the number of heads hung over the entrance. Both enemies and ancestors were displayed to attract prosperity and fertility. The British, during colonial rule, by force and diplomacy, provided political stability between the warring factions, but it was the work of Christian missionaries arriving only in 1947 that transformed the region. Nagaland is today considered the most Baptist corner of the world. 85% of the population of 2 million is Baptist, with the remaining 15% Catholic and animist. Mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy is fall like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling the over me. Hey, oh, I will see if you mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you and we bless you for the beautiful morning that we have. Lord, we thank you for the hospitality that we have experienced and enjoyed here in this village. Lord, we ask you to bless them, bless them in their life's journey, being with them, giving them life and joy, that they may always praise you and bless you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, the Baptist Church came here first, 130 years ago, and they did a good job. They evangelized all the villages. There are no villages which had not been touched by the Baptist missionaries. They translated the Bible into the local languages. And then when the Catholics came, naturally, they received us for education. They wanted good education. They have seen our education institutions in other parts of India. And so they invited us. And even now I get invitations. Please come and start a school. Oh, <laughs> High in the Naga Hills, close to the Burmese border, 
This village elder dreams that his grandchildren might see a better future than he did. In earlier years, he passed on through oral tradition the tribal customs and morality. Today, he now understands that Catholic schools can offer the best education to his grandchildren and that these Catholic schools also welcome children from every social stratum. <laughs> This Catholic school of some 2,000 pupils is also open to Hindus and Muslims. For the nuns, they are simply children, undivided by race or religion, and often the poorest of the poor. Although classes sometimes number 90 students, each year the sisters reluctantly turn away between 100 to 200 children. This school also shelters young women from a particularly grim fate. Many girls unable to access the education system are often driven to enter brothels, too often. One response from the church for those children outside the educational system is through the work of religious sisters, offering practical courses to young women, such as secretarial skills and dressmaking. Sister Theresia, missionary sister and teacher by vocation, received a unique call to be a touring sister. Always on the move, she plays a crucial role in seeking out communities most in need, offering pastoral as well as social support. Uh, a touring mission was something very difficult and I had to come out of the structure house, structure programs, again structural religious life where everything set time for rising, time for this, time for that. But when it is touring, we have to go according to the space of the people. And the people, if they go, 